What is up guys? Welcome back to a brand new episode from Backyard Boys. This episode we're starting off just a little bit it's different than we do with our usual ones. I am making the intro for this video at the very end of the video and the reason for that is because I wanted to tell you guys the true driving experience. I had driving hour stage 2 tuned um, C63 AMG. It is an absolute beast. Let me tell you that. Not too much of a spoiler alert. Go ahead and enjoy the video. And I just wanted to give a humongous shout out to Ystec over here for hooking it up with some insane tuning stuff. I mean, the car just sounds absolutely amazing. I'm pretty sure you guys heard in the beginning of the video our little donuts. You can hear that blow off out, man. It is very darn loud. It's aggressive. I had an amazing time with the 15 minutes or however long I drove the car. It's just a completely different experience than a BMW or any other car I've driven. Mercedes really likes to make their car tight and this one here in particular is like definitely a sports car. It's not like one of those big boat Mercedes. Um, many of you guys know, maybe know what I'm talking about. It just kind of has this like wobble feel. This one has none of that stuff. This thing is just tight on the road. It's amazing. And we're going to start the episode off with installing the ECU. It was extremely tight to get that ECU in there. Not much room in there. It was kind of hard, but we got it done. We had to pull the fans out and all that stuff is coming up right here. Enjoy. It is 11, 18 Monday, September 28th. And, um, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I thought this job right over here is gonna be pretty quick and that's why, I mean, to be honest with you, we thought removing the ECU would be quick, but installing it is 10 times harder. So as you guys can tell, we have our Wise Tech Engineering. I don't wanna show you guys the front cover it has my address on it, but I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you guys what the heck is even happening. So we pulled the ECU out from the car um, I kind of hinted it in a couple of the videos and it was just absolutely gnarly hard to get that pulled out and I do have a lot of experience with this kind of stuff and it was really hard for me. I do have some tools, you know, some, some stuff to get it done. Honestly, I would not recommend this job for anyone that just doesn't like, doesn't have patience or anything. My hands are all like beat up and bloody everywhere. Like it's actually really hard, but basically what we're doing now is <laughs> took apart this whole entire top section. I didn't even figure I was going to record this because I never knew it would go this far and under you can't really record anything that's just like fiddling around with your fingers. Took off this top brace over here, took off everything up top, pulled the fan up just to give us about two, three inches more of space, um, about three inches more space over there. Pull the front bumper off. It's just a pain. It's literally insane. Like, okay, that rhymes. That sounds kind of cool. But went ahead and jacked up the car. And we barely have access up under there. I don't know where you guys, how to show you guys where that ECU goes, but it's somewhere up over there and it just sits at a slant. It has like three or four mounting brackets on it. It is brutal. It is literally brutal. Uh, we were not planning to put this in the video. We were not even planning to tear everything apart to this extent. So I figured I'm going to throw this inside the video and show you guys how far we went to installing this ECU. We also do have a Army Tricks exhaust for the car, which is going to go on pretty darn soon. So stay tuned for all that. It's going to be absolutely gnarly. Stage two, let's get it. So I'm going to put you guys back on the time lapse, take, them, take some cinematic shots, and get all this stuff back into position. Man, this is brutal. Let's get it though. So got the ECU in there and it's 11.57, about 50 minutes later, 40 minutes later, sorry. The ECU is right over there, pretty easy to see it from the top, um, but it's nearly impossible to reach. It's like, look, but don't touch, one of those things. Um, usually the ECU is either directly up top, usually hidden one of those, or inside the glove box, but on this one I have no idea why German engineering decided to do that. but. It is what it is. The ECU is back in now, and we gotta get all this fan and everything reinstalled. Put this top piece, I don't know what exactly it's called, it's right over there on the floor. But let's get this whole entire front end back into its position and looking like a Mercedes C63 again. Let's do it.
so this whole top section is nice and done it's looking pretty headlights are still out ed's gonna go under the car right now put in the final um little there's that little shield guard so look at that oh anyways get that cleaned out bro and then we're basically done we can fire up the car we're gonna give you guys a little fire up tonight it is once again uh 12 30 now 12 28 so yeah this is how how far we go to create some content that way we can get three videos out a week i love it though let's get it got the tools all cleaned up and the ecu is now officially in the car bolted down and sitting all nice and flush right now we got the battery connected we got ed inside the car what's this thing horsepower supposed to be after we put the down pipes on 620 620 horsepower big two two door i was about to say two seater big two door sports car 620 horsepower that is going to be an absolute animal i hopefully hopefully this motor does not rough idle without the down pipes well the catless down pipes because it got catted down pipes right now but let's hear it start up maybe it might have some more burbles i'm not too sure just yet we're not going to run it for too long hopefully everything checks out the computer is connected and the car recognizes the computer everything works well let's give it a crank go ahead uh, a crank rough interruption we had to hook up the battery starter and now let's officially give it a crank hopefully it turns over now go ahead ah it's dead try it again okay give it a couple minutes all right give it a crank oh it started up That's such a weird noise. They're like, it's weird. Like it doesn't, it doesn't, it's like, it sounds like it's somewhere there. I don't know where exactly it's coming from. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoy that little snippet of us installing that ECU. Once again, shout out to Wise Tech for that ECU. I am very pumped to try this thing out and see what kind of beast it actually truly is. But now let's continue with the rest of the video. So it is the next morning here and for us to take a spin on this car, we need to do two more things. We need to swap out the wheels and tires because if you guys have seen the reveal video, that front driver tire is completely bent. Let's actually take a look at it real quickly. For those of you guys that are new to the channel, look at this, look at this. This bent from the pressure cracks. I have no idea how that actually happened, but it is like completely, like the wheel itself is just it's really, really weirdly bent. Back there behind you, we do have two new tires and a reconditioned basically new rim right over here one of these rims are super expensive this rim right here was over a thousand dollars one wheel so yeah that's definitely not cheap we got two new a3s i think or a3 plus as3 whatever pilot sports these are really nice tires especially with the seattle weather we cannot have any kind of slicks or anything because we will definitely be spinning out because we got rain and then sunshine rain and sunshine so we need something like that after that, we're gonna put together the front end and I think we're basically ready to take the very first spin for this car. Man, I am pumped. Let's get these wheels off, get these ones remounted and balanced and put back into the car. So both the tires are off now. Look at this one. This got fat. I don't know what the heck that is, but I don't know why it's even on the tire. That's weird. It's like a ru uh, ruptured or punctured, whatever you want, ruptured uh, sidewall. But our local, what's it called, tire shop doesn't let us film there. So I'm going to catch you guys in the next scene when we get these tires, those tires right there on these wheels. And then we get the fixed tire, the sensor into the fixed tire. Anyways, we're going to get everything situated. And I'll catch you guys in a little bit. So we're back from the tire shop now and the wheels and tires are on all the sensors are in look how good this looks man These are brand new these suckers should do real nice on corners right now What we got to do is actually go ahead and put the fender liner in right over here We do have the fender liner here and then put the wheels on and put the car back on his feet because it's currently on jacks Let's do it
moving on forward with this build we have a couple more things to buckle up before we could take it for its first test spin as you guys saw earlier we went ahead and put on some new wheels and tires in the front and from uh, physically inspecting it with our eyes we do not have any suspension damage we can only tell one way when we go take it for a spin I apologize it's kind of loud the rain but uh, the next thing we got to do is actually put the headlights up to the car, put the front bumper up, make sure you know everything's nice and tight, it won't fly off at mile, 60 miles per hour, let's say. I don't know if we can go much faster than that because unfortunately we do have some crappy weather right now. Um, so that's kind of part of the game about living in Seattle. Next thing moving on forward is we got to put some um, high flow uh, air filters on. This is why Stick actually recommends these for a stage two. We put those on and then we put on these basically blow files VTAs. I think what they're called, I'm not exactly sure, but they all go up top and it looks pretty darn simple to put everything on. Another thing the stage two, uh, Ystick recommends is actually downpipes. Unfortunately, we do not have downpipes on the car at the moment. We will very, very, very soon and a full exhaust system. So stay tuned for that, it's gonna be very exciting. But for the time being, I'm not sure what the worst that can happen. I'm guessing that uh, the computer can throw a check engine light or maybe it's not gonna give its full potential, but we can't even test its full potential of the vehicle with the rain now. So I don't know, let's go ahead and put all this stuff on and then drop the frame, get it off, and uh, take it for his t first test spin, man. The interior is all together. Exterior is basically all done now, too. Needs some prep work and body, but it's kind of hard. We're filming two videos at once, so stay with us. Let's get this assembled. So now that the front bumper and the headlights are on, everything's connected, everything is nice and neat. We do have to pull this bumper off uh, to get all this bodywork finished up, but for the test spin, we want it on, we want it to look good. Uh, right now, what we gotta install is the VTAs and the high flow filter. So the high flow filters go over here, correct? Yeah. Under these panels. And then the VTA is actually, is very simple. So basically you unplug this over here, and then here, you actually just put a little cap on. So, see this cap right here? So you just basically plug this up, boom, and then this hose, you delete this hose completely. And then on the other side of the hose, you can see in here there's two little screws. Uh, it's very straightforward. We're gonna get it off, and all you do is install this uh, VTA adapter. It comes with the seal and everything, so it just plugs up over there, and then you delete this hose. That's it, pretty straightforward, let's get it. So here's the original one. Uh, basically, I'm, what I'm assuming is it diverts the air from there back into the intake and basically cycles the air. And with the blow off valve, if you actually think about it, it should in theory lose horsepower, maybe a couple of horsepower, but we concluded that we'd rather take the sound over the five horsepower or how much it will lose. Let's go ahead and put that back in there. You can see it's a pretty similar system here. And that's just about it. Look at that, boom, both Ystec VTAs are in. We got the little caps here and here. Now it's time to install the high flow filters and we can officially take it off the frame machine. The 
actual ECU is already in, which was a crazy pain in the butt, but we got it all done. Yes, sir. We have got all the high flow intakes, everything installed. It is basically ready besides the downpipes, as I told you guys before. We finally got some decent weather as well. It seems like the weather uh, is kind of on our side now because it was just pouring while we were installing that. But it's kind of looking like this for now. The front bumper, everything's mocked up. I think we can close the hood, correct? Yeah. Hood should be good. Make sure we got no tools left up in there. And uh, nice there's a hood badge that's a chinese one we got an oem don't worry so that's what it's looking like man this front end is all complete it's looking pretty gaps are nice this front bumper is, has a lot of work on it i showed you guys earlier but like i said we're doing two videos at once so this right here is prime this right here is prime we're gonna go ahead and probably mock up the rear bumper as well that way it doesn't fly off and we're ready to rock let's go ahead and get this thing on the road Just completely different. I don't know. Maybe I'm just really used to the BMW interior. 
I'm really liking it though, besides the alignment, the yellow stitching, the yellow seat belts, it's coming together really good. The cluster has a lot of yellow as well, so a lot of this stuff makes sense. Although you can switch this stuff, so for example, you can switch it to Super Sport, it's gonna look like that. You can switch it to Classic, it looks like that, Sport, like this. Um, but yeah, unfortunately we can't really test it out that much because of the rain, obviously. But I guess I'll set you guys up with some exhaust sounds and things like that just to show you guys. You know, in further episodes, we will get some good, good rollers on it and stuff like that. Just kind of a little bit sketchy to drive right now, missing a mirror, you know, looking like a spotted cow and whatnot. So yeah, I guess let's go to our little drift spot, see if we can do some donuts. Let's go see what the thing got. I honestly don't know. I'm a little bit worried because I know these things are kind of like heavy. Mercedes makes their cars heavy, so it just throws you like a cow, but we'll hopefully, see. hopefully it doesn't feel like a boat. I uh, hope <laughs> not because that sport car feeling, you know, when you got things under control feels really nice, honestly. We went ahead and did a little road test and things are looking pretty darn good. We went up to about 70 miles per hour. Everything is good. Alignment is a little bit off, which makes sense, but we have no like scary rubbing, none of that stuff. I mean, take a look at this side of the car. It just looks absolutely gorgeous. I don't know if you can really tell by the inside, but you can see that yellow stitching and the yellow seat belts. Man, they are absolutely gorgeous. Unfortunately, we cannot test the car out on this wet pavement, but trust me, when all the uh, exhaust comes on, all that stuff comes on, we will definitely get a dry day out and we'll get you guys some solid, solid content. But you guys know me and you guys know that I love doing donuts and we're gonna try this thing out, see what it really got and see how it handles. I'm gonna go ahead and sit inside the car, uh, turn some knobs, turn off the traction control. I honestly don't know how to turn the traction control off completely on this car. Every car is different, but let's give it a shot and see if we can do some couple of donuts at least. See if that rear end is heavier, how it just likes to act just in general. It's Mercedes are a little bit different. They're heavier cars compared to like an M4 or something. M4 will do like crazy donuts, any really Beamer. Let's, try, let's give it a shot. Going on the inside. Uh, first thing I think we gotta do is turn on Sport Plus here. And then let's go to manual mode, slippery sport plus, and then traction controls right here. So I think we've got to hold it because it's on sport handling and now it's completely off. Let's go ahead and buckle up and uh, give it a shot, man. I'm a little bit nervous, but I think we can get this done. Let's do it. crazy because I drifted um I drifted a different I think it was like E55 or no what was that the C big uh, boat CLS CLS and dude that thing was just straight junk like it would just toss me the rear end and stuff this thing is dude that thing handles better than a, a beamer I don't know that just went perfect donuts and I was trying to do that figure eight stuff dude that is I'm pretty amazed that's legit so apparently now the owner wants to give it a shot See what he got, man. How are you trying to kill me? What's a Backyard Boys video without some donuts? Come on now. We are back at the house now and I wanted to address a couple of things. So the car is a beast. Yes, it does feel very powerful, but I don't think it's its full potential 620 horsepower. And there's a couple of reasons why I think that. First of all, the ECU is tuned. We got it sent off to Wise Tech. That's why the car was on the frame machine for you know quite some time. Although their turnaround speeds are incredibly fast. 
We got the ECU off, everything is tuned, but the car currently does not have a down or catless downpipe. And for me, that's a big red X onto why the car wouldn't be at 620 horsepower like YSEC rates it at. It does feel like a 480 horsepower beast right now, but we won't really tell until we get the downpipes on the car. Another thing that's kind of in my head thinking like, why is it not really boosting to its full potential is because maybe the car needs to drive a little bit. That way it can read the fuel, all that, you know, the, the air pressures, the fuel and all that stuff. And then maybe it will adjust the computer to where it's supposed to be. I'm not sure just yet. That's kind of where my mind is at. But guys, we are almost ready for paint with this car. We have got a ton of work done and it's super exciting. The car is an absolute beast, man. It's fun to drive. Alignment's a little bit off, but just the sounds of it, the VTA or the blow off valve, the diverter, it just sounds gorgeous. I love the car in general. The car is almost complete. It's gorgeous. The color combo, everything. I just can't say enough, man. The car is amazing. But with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and humongous shout out to WiseTech. Um, I'm pretty sure once everything is calibrated and running right, this thing will be an absolute monster. But if you guys enjoyed this episode, please smash that like button to show your support. Don't forget to comment anything down below. What are your thoughts? Maybe you guys have some ideas or maybe you know the reason why it's not at its 620 horsepower. Yes, I know it doesn't have downpipes on just yet. Don't say, oh, that's the downpipe problem. It probably is. We do have a full exhaust system coming onto this car, but that'll be in further episodes. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.